you guys, um, I'm not sure if Alyssa mentioned this before or not, but she's asked me to do book reviews on this channel as another source of information for you guys and also as a way for me to participate since I don't spend a lot of my income purchasing various cosmetic products. Um, so I agreed to do that and the first book that I want to review for you all is the book Fathomless by Jackson Pierce. Um, it's weird. There's a weird glare on it because it's on my tablet. Um, so I apologize for that. But this book came out at the beginning of September and it was one of my second most anticipated books of the month. About 10 books published this month that I wanted to see so um, and read. So it really had a lot to stand up to um, with that kind of a lineup behind it. But it's basically, it's a retelling of the classic story, um, The Little Mermaid. And not just the Disney version, which most of us, including myself, are most familiar with, but also, someone's mowing outside, that's really random, um, but also the Hans Christian Andersen version, which is kind of dark and creepy, as most original fairy tales were. Um, the main characters, sorry my cheat sheet is turned wrong side over, apologies. Um, the story centers around triplets, Celia, Anne, and Jane, who are similar to the fates. Celia can see the past, um... Jane sees the present, and Anne sees the future. So they have these powers, and Celia feels kind of out of place about hers, but the other two girls really embrace those um, extra little bit of something they have. And as the story progresses, um, a boy named Jude falls into the ocean and is saved by a girl named Lo, who is termed an ocean girl. Kind of like a mermaid, but not exactly anything like what we're used to seeing in popular literature or movies, those kind of things. Then Celia is stuck being, like I said, really the center of the story, trying to find her place in her siblings, in between her siblings, um, trying to help Lo find her past, and trying to help this boy that she saved and is falling in love with. So, it's a lot of pressure for one girl. This is the third book in Jackson Pierce's Fairy Tales retelling series. It's not really a series, more like an interconnected group of no standalone novels. You can read each of them alone, although there are character crossovers. The first one is Sisters Red, which is a retelling of the Little Red Riding Hood, and then Sweetly, which is a very loose interpretation of, um, I can't even think now, Han Hansel and Gretel. So she takes these stories and puts her own twist on them, and they are loosely connected, but like I said, can totally be read by themselves. Um... I don't really, um, I couldn't say that I enjoyed this book less than the first two books in this series. Um, I love all of them, but this one kind of, um, throughout the entire story, I was kind of expecting different things to happen, and the anticipation of those things occurring made it difficult to really stay engaged in the current storyline as it was going on. Um, it might have been because, like I said, I was waiting for other things that I anticipated happening. But also, it deviates a lot from the standard version of The Little Mermaid that I'm familiar with. Like, Ariel and Prince Eric and Disneyed Up with singing crabs and various crustaceans. Not that that's a bad thing. Um, it's just getting used to something that you're not expecting. But the story was still incredible, and I love the way that Jackson Pierce creates characters and makes them so diverse and so different from each other. Um, triplets who all have the ability to see into another person's lives and yet all three of them are distinct voices. Even Lo and her human self are completely distinctive because all of the Ocean Girls were humans once and Celia's main goal is helping Lo connect to her human self. Um, that's the only way Celia can think that her power to see the past is in any way useful at all. She pretty much thinks that she's not anywhere near as cool as her sisters and that she doesn't have any kind of real power because seeing the past doesn't change anything to her. So even the chapters, um, each chapter separated, some from Celia's point of view, some from Lowe's point of view, and some from o Lowe's human self's point of view. And each of those chapters are so diverse and different. Um, the voice that Jackson Pierce gives each of those characters is phenomenal. And even without the chapter headings letting you know who's telling this particular part of the story, it's easy to identify 
who's speaking and who's talking to you and who you're listening to. The story flows well, um, except a lot happens at the very end, which requires you to have gathered and amassed a lot of information from earlier in the book and apply it at this point. Um, and it's very fast paced and I actually read it completely through and got to the end and had to skip back several chapters and reread just so I could stay on pace with what had happened. Um, which I don't mind. I do that a lot. Actually, I get so into something and so excited about finding out how things end that I end up missing key elements. And then I'm like, wait a second, how do we get here? Because I don't really understand what's going on right now. This is super weird. Um, but, you know, that's just me. Some of you may be slow readers that refuse to skip ahead. And if you are, then I commend you because I don't know how you do it. I get so excited about things that I'm just zooming along. But all in all, this was a fantastic story. My final verdict would be, like I said, it's one of my second most anticipated books of the month. The first being Libba Bray's The Diviners, which I still haven't finished because I've been reading other things that have distracted me. Surprise, surprise. I do that a lot. But um, I would give it a solid four stars, which is, I'm pretty sure, the same rating I gave the other two fairy tale retelling books on Goodreads. I'm not sure. I'll have to go back and recheck that. But I think if you're the kind of person who loves fairy tale retellings or who loves something with a little bit of a supernatural twist or a love story, you know, this is the kind of book for you. If you hate to read things out of order like I do, um, I would totally suggest that you pick up Sweetly and Sisters Red. Yes, Sweetly and Sisters Red. I'll put links to the, all three books in the Jubilee Doo down there. And as well as links to my Goodreads account so you can see what I've read. I don't really do reviews there at this point. Thinking about starting those a little bit. So you'll be able to see what I think. But um, if you guys have read this book, feel free to tell me in the comments if you think this blog was a lot of nonsense. And you have no idea what this book is about right now. Tell me that in the comments. This is my very first book review. So I wrote some notes. Like you can see I wrote... Um, like I long handed a book review kind of thing, but I couldn't, like I didn't want to sit here and be like, and then we were doing some stuff. So, you know, if you have any suggestions for things that you think I could do differently, please feel free to let me know in the comments and I will try to respond to them or Alyssa will tell me that they're there and I will respond to them that way. So you guys have a fantastic day and a happy weekend. Bye.